Hello everyone, Gebatron here. In this video we are going to talk about solo tanking in the game Hell Let Loose. I want to be clear here though that I am in no way advocating that you intentionally solo tank in an active match. This video may get some flack, but please watch the whole thing through before making your judgments. The gameplay in the background will just be random armor footage I've taken over time. Alright, let's get into it. What is solo tanking? Well, according to Gebatron's Dictionary of Hell Let Loose terminology, solo tanking is defined as, quote, operating any armored vehicle and entering combat in an active match with the intent of staying a solo operator or combatant. I believe the author chose those words carefully, and hopefully by the end of this video we will all be on the same page. Let's move on to server rules and compliance. While there aren't any hard rules against solo tanking on the official servers, I can't think of a single community server that doesn't have a strict rule against it, with the repercussions ranging anywhere from being kicked to an outright ban from the server. Keep in mind that many of the server admins communicate this information between themselves, so a ban on one server can potentially lead to a ban on multiple servers. Why is solo tanking banned? Solo tanking is banned for a few reasons. 1. It limits the combat effectiveness of the vehicle. You'll be operating at either a mobility disadvantage, a visibility disadvantage, or an immediate firepower disadvantage from a reduction in reaction time. 2. It can cost the team large amounts of fuel resources. 3. You could potentially be of better use to the team helping in other ways. Because of these reasons, it is usually the conception that the solo tanker is inherently not a team-oriented player. Now there are some players out there who claim to be better on their own than with a full crew, and while this may be their personal experience in game, all things being equal, a good fully crewed tank will defeat a good solo tanker every time. What about training? If the reason you are solo tanking in a match is to train or learn how to operate the armor, then there is a better way. Check out my training video in the description below. Now all this being said, there are a couple of situations where the community will waive these harsh restrictions. 1. The first is if you are acting as an armor support player. An armor support player is someone who is either bringing armor up to active crews whose tanks are damaged, or someone who is creating a forward motor pool. If you want to know what I mean by that, you can check out the video at the top right hand corner or check the video description below. However, it's necessary that you have been given permission by other officers on the team to do so by communicating your intentions. 2. If there is no armor squad available. Now this has to be explained in a little more detail. Perhaps the current armor squad or squads are all full or there is a lock squad that won't accept your request. Then it is necessary to create your own squad and ask over command chat if anyone wants to join you. If there is no one willing to join you and the officers all agree you can solo tank, then you will be able to do it without consequence. However, there are ways to be a solo tanker and an effective teammate, and that's what we will cover in the rest of this video. How can we be a good solo tanker? How can we solo tank effectively? Here are some ways to improve your solo tank play, and honestly, there are ways to improve your armor play overall, but we're specifically talking about solo tanking here. 1. The first thing you can do to be a more effective and team-oriented solo tanker is to intermittently ask for additional crew members. As the match progresses, there may be turnover occurring among the team, players coming, players going. Make sure you are keeping the team aware that it is not your desire to continue to solo tank and that you are actively looking to expand your crew. 2. Keep your resource costs low. Limit yourself to only operating light armor and recon vehicles as they have a much lower fuel cost than medium and heavy armor. They also have faster respawn times. Leave the more combat effective armor for the full crews. Even if there are multiple tanks spawned in, only operate the cheap armored vehicles. Nothing says, I'm not a team player, like taking the only available Tiger or the only available Jumbo as a solo tanker. 3. Officers' Responsibilities you're an officer soldier, so act like one. Make sure you are doing things like leaving accurate marks on the map, updating your marks as the situation changes, communicating the information you are gathering to the rest of the team, and coordinating appropriately. 
Just because you're a solo tanker doesn't mean you don't have these responsibilities. 4. Coordinate with infantry. Sticking close to and working directly with infantry will not only provide them with a little extra firepower, but will also help make up for some of the loss in combat effectiveness you experience from solo tanking. They will be able to help you spot and react to enemy threats, as well as cover your ass from pesky enemy AT soldiers. 5. Support friendly armor. Keeping an eye on your friendly armor's flanks and rear can be the difference between winning and losing an engagement and they will no doubt appreciate the support. 6. Keep your distance. As a solo tanker, you will not be able to act as a breakthrough tank as it will leave you too exposed. Use your armor's reach to your advantage. Support your team from a well-concealed position, ideally somewhere enemy infantry will have to expose themselves to attack you. Remember that you have optics with variable zooms, so use them. If operating a recon vehicle, make sure you are using the radio set and, quote, taking pictures as often as possible to help the team react to the battlefield. Now just to clarify, I am not saying that it's okay to go into an active server with the intent of solo taking and staying that way throughout the match as evidenced by what we discussed earlier in this video. But under certain circumstances, and by following these guidelines, you can avoid any negative consequences from the community, all while being a useful and valued teammate. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you found that useful or insightful. Make sure to check the description below for other videos related to this topic. I'll put a link to my beginner's armor guide down there. It's long and I made it before I knew how to edit or anything really, but it's full of good information. There will also be a PayPal link down there if you'd like to support the channel directly. Subscribe if you found this video useful. Please like and share as it really helps the channel. Thanks for all your support and thanks for watching.